All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us. Another episode of Catching Up with Jacob. And here he is, Jacob Prash, all the way on the East Coast. How are you, Jacob? Always good to be in my native hometown, New York City. Wonderful to be with you all in these exciting yet perilous times in which we find ourselves in the providence of God. Well, it's good to come home. It's good to come home. Uh, not too far from me. Jay, how are you, Jay? Well, you know, I might be jumping the gun a little bit here, but I do have to say I'm very happy that on April 8th that nothing will happen to California because we are completely out of the line of, of the, the, the the alignment. Yes, yes. The good news. we're not on the X. No, nope. I've seen the map. That's true. <laughs> California is in the clear. No wickedness is, is too much for California, but we're in the clear. All right. Well, Jay, you're doing really well. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know if the clips is going to even be visible from Australia, but uh, Davey, how are you today? Yeah, doing pretty good. Thanks. Doing pretty good. Good to be here. All right. Good morning. It's Saturday morning there. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jacob, I love your shirt. Love it. It's a map of the New York subway system. Uh, this way, I don't get lost if I take the subway. If I want to know where I am and where I'm going, I just have to look at my shirt. My sister gave it to me as a joke. In my youth, I, of course, knew my way around the subways without looking at the map too much. But having lived abroad so long, now I have to look at the map sometimes. So yeah. there it is. All right. Well, uh, just a few announcements. You, you're teaching this weekend with Dave Rosetto at the Church of the Open Door. Is that right? We'll be at the Church of the Open Door at 7 p.m. on Saturday on 3rd Avenue and East 7th Street in the East Village. And then we'll be at the Church of the Open Door in Baltimore, 3 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. The details are on the Morio website, the itinerary page, or you can just Google Moriel itinerary and find it. That's where we shall be. When I get back to England in a few days, next weekend on Saturday, we shall be with Pastor Mark um, Jackson and with Pastor Tim Leach at the Moriel Affiliated Church in Winsford, in Cheshire, England, Winsford. Those details are also on the Moriel website, on the itinerary page, or just Google Moriel Itinerary. If you're in Cheshire, Liverpool, Merseyside, Manchester area, Staffordshire, we'll look forward to seeing you. If you're in the awesome. Washington, Baltimore area, we'll see you Sunday. And if you're in Greater New York, we'll see you Saturday if you can join us. Awesome. Thank you, Jacob. We had a great time here with Dave Rosetto and you uh, over the weekend here in Southern California. So everybody loved it. Well, you know, Mostly everybody loved it. I'm sure there's some Mostly naysayers. Mostly everybody loved it. <laughs> there's always some naysayers, but that's all right. We'll talk about that uh, at the end of the episode. Uh, we want to remind everyone, you know, we first want to thank everyone, I should say, for being on with us, not only live, but those who will watch later on Catching Up. We're on different platforms, including YouTube and Facebook, but Morial TV, Morial.tv, I should say, MorialTV.org. Uh, we are on Vimeo. We are on Telegram. We are on Rumble, which uh, have been very kind to us. And of course, our newest platform is X. And we'll be on X until uh, I guess Elon Musk doesn't want us there, but we'll, we're on X and uh, it's going well. So if you are a Twitter user, an X user, uh, find Moriel TV and you will find us. And we're actually live right now. So that'll be a great opportunity to get on it, to test it and look at it. Uh, we're posting some new things there. And uh, hopefully we'll have some newer videos coming up and um, some exclusive stuff on X. So we have some fun stuff coming up that we like to do. And so welcome in the name of the Lord. So blessed to have you. If you want to ask questions, we will have questions on backstage for Jacob. Go to Rumble, send the questions in. We'll get them in and we'll ask him and what he thinks of those things that are going on in the world. Some biblical questions, some geopolitics, all kinds of good stuff. Well, I do want to mention the podcast. The podcast is going well, as, as just as well as the videos, and those are audio, audio only on podcasts. Jay, remind me some of the platforms we're on. Now, you can find us on Amazon. You can find us on Podchasers. You can find us on Apple. Apple is a great resource. Apple. And yeah. also, of course, anywhere that pod, uh, podcasts can be found. Hey, man. Well, Jacob. Let's get cut up for a little bit. Things here are going very, very south in some parts of the world. Some parts of the world are just absolutely chaotic. But I did want to mention something. Uh, March 14th, which was yesterday, 
1883, Karl Marx gave one of the most um, greatest contribution to mankind. What is March 14th, 1883, Jacob, and what did he contribute? Well, if you go to Highgate Cemetery in North London, you'll see what he contributed. It's when he gave up the ghost. He realized he should have been a better Jew and a better Christian. His family was actually Jewish Christians. They don't know if they were saved, but that was his background. And of course, he went into Hegelian philosophy, dialectic materialism, and so forth. And now he knows he was wrong. Yeah, he's he's buried up in uh, in London. He's buried up in London, and um, what a tragedy! Uh, of all the things that he taught and did, the anti-Christian ideas, the anti-God, the communist, the Marxism, responsible in a lot of ways for millions of people that have died over the over the course of history. So. Uh, we're still feeling the effects of his teachings and Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto. And, oh. No, indirectly. If you go to, well, when I was last in Moscow in, in Red Square, giant, giant, humongous billboard opposite the Kremlin, and they have their own version of the Trinity. They have Marx, they have oh. Engels, and they have Lenin, just like a Trinity. That's how they see it. Um, there was a, a, a de facto deification of Marx, of Engels, and of, of, of Lenin. And it was, I have no doubt that communism, particularly Soviet communi uh, communism, um, was a religion. It was a, a de facto religion. You have the same with Mao in China. You have the same with Ho Chi Minh um, in, in, in North Vietnam. You have the same with Kim Il uh, Sun in North Korea. You have the same with Ceausescu in Romania. You have the deification of men, antichrist figures, and that is what happened. Um, Marx was not as bad as his followers. He might have had some kind of noble intention, except his personal life and his family life were were, were, were travesties. He couldn't take care of his family or himself properly. Um, mm. He was rather quite parasitic and hypocritical in his personal life, but he opened the door for unspeakable evil. And he was proven to be wrong. His mm. theory is of dialectic materialism and his theory of history was proven to be wrong. He said that communism would never come to Russia. Russia was too primitive. It was feudalistic. Communism had to evolve from capitalism and it would only come from Great Britain, the first capitalist country. In fact, communism never actually came to Britain. It came to Russia, the last feudal country, where mm. he said it could never work. He was fundamentally wrong fundamentally proven wrong by history. Yet people still revere his legacy. There'll be yeah. people going up there on the 14th of March, the Highgate Cemetery in London for a memorial. They will, yeah. doctors will probably watch it online. Yeah, what, what a mess, what a mess. Um, also, I wanted to wish you happy St. Patrick's Day. That's coming up next week on the 17th. So uh, Jacob, your family from Ireland. My mother's so, family, yes. Yeah, so happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you so much as the, uh, well, the Irish Americans used to say Aaron go brach, Ireland forever, except the Protestants used to say Aaron go back <laughs> because of the anti Irish Catholic bigotry in New York, Chicago, and oh. Boston. Um, but Aaron go brach or Aaron go back, which had to do with the importation of the orange green Catholic Protestant thing. But to our Irish friends, we wish you a very happy, very happy St. Patrick's Day. Every blessing. Don't drink too much Guinness. Don't drink too much Jameson's. Just enjoy the parade. <laughs> St. Patrick, Patrick was a missionary who preached the Christian faith. When you read his letter to Chronicus or you read his confessions, there was no purgatory, there was no pope, there was no rosaries. He just lifted up Jesus. The real Patrick had it right. What's become of him is something else. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Jacob. Jacob, let's catch up. And the first thing I wanted to ask you is, of course, your hot take. Your hot take on what's going on uh, with Fannie Willis, what's going on in that Trump case, what's going on with the NAACP, with Don Lemon, all these things that are just brewing as part of, it's a lashback against uh, what's going on in the conservative world. These things are coming very fast. And it's all about racism. That's really all they, they really fomented us. So let's give you a hot take on that and uh, take it away.
well as Thomas Sowell and as Candace Owen and, uh, and Larry Elder and other knowledgeable Blacks explained, this is simply to manipulate ignorant and uneducated Black people um, to, to blame a, a, a mythical systemic racism and to blame a history of slavery from 150 years ago or Jim Crow from 50 years ago for the present problems. The present problems of the Black community, of course, have to do with a school system designed to fail absentee fatherhood and replacing a black husband and father with, with food stamps to create a permanent underclass that can be manipulated and to perpetuate a victim mentality that will simply generate racism. Barack Obama, who was half black, became president promising a racial re reconciliation and left the country deliberately more racially divided than it has ever been. We can be sure of the following. The more this victim mentality is perpetuated, the more certain it is that Blacks will remain the socioeconomically lowest strata on the socioeconomic demographic. That's what it's designed to do, is to make an underclass and prevent Black people from becoming upwardly mobile in order to manipulate them politically. But everything becomes race. Let's just look at it. You have Black overachievement in professional sports. We always have, we always have. You have black predominance in basketball. You have black predominance in, in obviously boxing. You have black predominance uh, in a number of sports. They've even taken white people sports and performed brilliantly beginning with Arthur Ashe in tennis and of course Tiger Wood in golf. Black people have an incredible aptitude and an incredible physical performance capacity for sports. They've done well. They achieved those things and the astronomical salaries that go with it, not through affirmative action, but through hard work, hard practice, maintaining a, a, an athletically healthy a lifestyle conducive to, to good health that an athlete needs to perform under those kinds of, 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 of pressures. And they've done brilliantly. Now, I've always maintained that what Black people have done in sports and in music, they can do in other things if they had a proper school system and proper motivation. But that is not what's happened. Black America has abandoned, mostly, the Baptist and Pentecostal heritage of their grandparents and great-grandparents. They've not gone the way of, of Frederick Douglass and of Booker T. Washington or of Harriet Tubman. They've gone the way of W.E.B. Du Bois and the racecrats, the race parasites who make their living in the race industry. People like Jesse Jackson and people like Al Sharpton and, and, and left-wing journalists like Joy Reid and so forth. These are people who make their living in the race industry and it's their power base. Well, let's look what happened. Florida has said the taxpayers will no longer de fund DEI in state-funded universities. The taxpayers should not have to pay for this kind of nonsense as DEI, diversity, equity, and uh, inclusion. Inclusion, which by, by them, they it, it means not, not equality in opportunity, but equality in outcome. <laughs> you got to have so many, so many, so many. Okay, well, Suppose somebody was to say, we want DEI in sports. There are too many black players in baseball, in football, and in basketball particularly. With the exception of hockey, blacks have made inroads in disproportionate numbers in every sport, and that is discriminatory against white people. We want inclusion. For Nobody would ever say that. <laughs> Nobody would ever say that. Yet the NAACP which was destroyed, in my opinion, by Benjamin Jealous. It is not the NAACP of, of, of previous generations, of Medicare Evers and so forth. The NAACP has told Black athletes not to play for Florida schools, not to play for Florida teams. The one thing where, through simple achievement, Blacks have outperformed and, and overperformed they're saying, don't do that now because they're not giving us the results we want and having Blacks who are less talented in other fields. This is a complete disgrace. But it goes on. 
it's not even logical. There are people screaming now that X refusing to financially sponsor Don Lemon. Oh, that's because of racism. Well, no, it wasn't. Elon Musk had a reason to get rid of him before he came on. He can go <laughs> on X. Now, he's not banned from X, but he's not going to get paid for it. Then we have Lori Bush from the squad. This woman, Nancy Pelosi, allowed onto the House Judiciary Committee, despite the fact she's not a lawyer. And she said she's qualified to be on the House Judiciary Committee, although she did not go to law school because she was part of the Michael Brown protest in Ferguson, <laughs> Tennessee, where a thug robbed an Asian shopkeeper in the accompaniment of a ex-con who had pleaded guilty to lying to the police on a previous occasion, was cited by a policeman. He attacks the policeman, injures the policeman, and goes for the policeman's gun. The fingerprints are found on the holster and gets himself shot going for this cop's gun after he robs the store because this person who he was with, the ex-con who previously lied to the police and admitted so, said, hands up, don't shoot. The autopsies, the forensic reports, the ballistics reports all showed that that scientifically could not have been the case. The FBI investigation carried out by a black attorney general, Eric Holder, under his, under his direction. The FBI, as well as the local police investigations, had five or six witnesses, all of them black, who did not give that kind of account. Hands up, don't shoot. The whole thing was a lie. The result was riots, looting, burning, and this Lori Bush says, well, she was part of this protest. What were you protesting? Somebody who robs a store, assaults a little Asian shopkeeper, assaults a cop, injures the cop, goes for the cop's gun and gets himself shot, and now he's the victim? That's That was her platform to run for Congress. <laughs> but then we find out she's paid exorbitant salaries for personal security at the taxpayer's expense. Who did she pay these six figures to? Her husband. Oh, you're picking on me because I'm black. No, nobody's picking on you because you're black. How can you pay this kind of money to your husband? Exorbitant. Unbelievable. Yeah, taxpayer money. The, the taxpayer money. Then it goes on again. Absurdity of absurdities. Michigan State University. The basketball coach is Juan Horib. Horib. He has a nine game straight loss record. It was nine games straight. In the last three years, he's been 45 out of 55. He's just a bad coach. He's not a good coach. He just can't get his players to perform. He does, He's not a good strategist. He's a bad coach. He's being sacked, as he should be. He can't do the job. So therefore, a black journalist named Charles Hallman says, ask him, is this because of the white media? They racialize it. Don't look at his record, his, his loss, his record of losses and inability as a coach. Don't look at this ridiculous affirmative action president of Harvard with a documented record of 20 years of plagiarism. No, no, she's a victim of racism. It doesn't matter. The facts don't matter what they did, what they didn't do. None of that. It's always about race. This is sick and perverted. And it will assure that black people never make it to first base. It will assure that the black man will always be the low man on the totem pole. They've been betrayed by their own kind. Uncle Tom was not an Uncle Tom. He was flogged to death by Simone Legree for not telling where runaway slaves were hiding. He was a man with a strong Christian faith in the book and in the play. Uh, but there was somebody called Sanbo, Sanbo, who collaborated with the white plantation owners against other blacks, the overseers, the house black. And that is what these people are. These black poverty crats, these people like Lori Bush or 
Congresswoman Presley, or well, take your pick, but Joy Reid, or Booker, the Senator Booker. Take your pick. These are the sandbows. Barack Obama is a sandbow. Michelle Obama is a sandbow. They are the they are there to make black people stooges of white liberals. They are the overseers of blacks to keep them on the plantation, known as the housing estate. That's what they're there for. It's the same old game. It's the party of Jim Crow and slavery holding the black man down and finding black sandbows to do their bidding for them. Mm. That is what we've got. They racialize everything. This reflects their own racism, their own bigotry. The fact that nearly three out of four black children are born out of wedlock, that's not the fault of white people. It's not the fault. Absentee fatherhood is not the fault of white people. It's the fault of the moral breakdown in the black community and in the nation at large. Don't racialize it. But they have to racialize it because they can't face the facts or the truth. They're very much like the ANC of South Africa. They have to blame the past because they cannot take responsibility for their own failures of the future and the present. All right. All right, Jacob, that's your hot take. Very good. Hot, hot. And uh, we'll get that up there on Catching Up. Jacob, let's talk about the other thing that's getting really, really hot, and that's the war. The war, Ukraine, NATO, Russia, France is mulling over the boots on the ground. Macron taking a page out of the former dictator and emperor of France is wants to send troops into Western Ukraine. He wants to go all the way to Russia, seemingly. And uh, now NATO saying, hey, we got some uh, hydrogen bombs that we can put on our fighter jets. We can go against Russia. Russia saying, well, if you're going to do that, then we're going to be ready too. Now you got uh, fighter jets over Sweden, over Finland, right on the border. Uh, Jacob, it's Macron has lost his mind. Not only is there controversy uh, with his uh, spouse, but also the fact that the, he wants the war. He wants to foment this war. NATO's the same way, I believe. Russia's the same way, I believe. This is going nowhere, and it's going to explode. I, I, I hope not, but it's going to explode soon. Well, let's take your first point first and your second point second. Um, there is no need for nuclear brinkmanship. It may be in response to the nuclear saber rattling of Mr. Putin. But there is no need for this kind of brinkmanship. We see something happening now in the Ukraine. The provision of Western technology. Although Ukraine is being emaciated by Russia, it's being decimated, Russia is absolutely being hurt, certainly economically. Now there are drones fired from, launched from Ukraine that are going 600 miles into Russia. 600 miles. Some have reached the St. Petersburg area, formerly Leningrad. Some have gone east of Moscow and hit an oil refinery. They are damaging Russia's capacity to refine oil, even for domestic consumption. Um, they are trying to grind down the Russian economy. They are fighting, and the West is giving them the technology to do it. Yeah. There is no need to talk about nuclear brinkmanship. Putin does that, and there's already an established response. I am against any NATO boots on the ground in the Ukraine. That's you can right. send in military advisors and civilian clothes. In other words, you get ex-special forces or former military officers who function in an advisory capacity as civilians once they're out of the military. That's always gone on, and it will always go on. The CIA does it. MI6 does it. They all do it. But to actually put NATO troops on the ground, that mm. is not advisable at the present time. It's mm. simply, and it's not necessary. Um, concerning the second thing with Mr. And remember, he's in trouble economically in his own country. He has to play the nationalist card. 
vive la France, vive la République, you know, vive le proletariat. He has to go back with his Napoleonic complex, a Napoleon complex, the Battle of Austerlitz and things like this. As to the second, where was his school? Excusez-moi, Monsieur Macron. Where is la école de vous? Who was your teacher? <laughs> you had a crush on the teacher? Yeah, he did. Well, well, you know what people are saying now. Married his teacher. The teacher had a brother, and his name, his name. What was his name? John Jean Michael. John Michael. Where is Monsieur Jean, uh, Jean Michel, s'il vous plaît? Ici, je suis Brigitte, bonjour. <laughs> Brigitte, qu'est-ce que je peux faire pour vous aujourd'hui, mademoiselle? Oh, madame, madame Macron, Brigitte. Bonjour. La femme? J'ai j'ai la femme. <laughs> All well, I got to say about uh, Miss Macron is she's got nothing on Josephine. I will take a, <laughs> yeah. a painted oil of Josephine over yeah. her any day. Yeah. We, Josephine was a hot soul sister. What's this thing? Some, some people say she's a tranny. <laughs> well, you know, if if if, uh, if Obama can have one, why not? Why not uh, Macron? Yeah, but at least Michelle Obama's a, a girl. I mean, there's actually people in France and the press speculating that that his wife is 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 is, is transsexual. I don't know if it's true, but it, it's 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 rather. It's on the magazines. Yeah, it's on the yeah. magazines. Oh yeah, sure. yeah. Now, Jacob, I want to ask you about Napoleon real quick because it, it it struck me what you wrote on Shadows of the Beast about Napoleon, and for the first time in a long time, there were actually believers in Europe who were believing that now Bible prophecy it's going to be real. It's 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 actually. A, a, a real possibility that these things are being fulfilled, uh, not spiritually, but literally. And they saw Napoleon going in, being, you know, crowned the Roman, Holy Roman Emperor, and he was wanting to take over, uh, you know, going into the Middle East, and they thought he was the Antichrist. Uh, can you speak okay. a little bit about that? Remind us of that. Well, said the book Shadows of the Beast. Napoleon, the strategic control and economic control of the Middle East shifted from the Crusades to the Muslims with Salah Hadin. Napoleon invades the Middle East. He defeats the Muslim Mamluks near the pyramids in Egypt. Yep. The big naval battle involving the British in the Eastern Mediterranean near Akko, of ancient Ptolemy, today called Akko in Galilee. But Napoleon yeah. goes to Mount Tabor, Har Tabor, where the story of Deborah takes place. This overlooks Nazareth, and it's opposite Armageddon, Har Megiddo, it's opposite Haramagido, in the Valley of Jezreel. And he goes up there, and he says, this is the perfect place for my ultimate military campaign. Mm. He throws the balance of power in the Middle East back into Europe that was that the Crusades lost against the Muslims, Salah Hadin, at the horns of Hattin in the Dark Ages, in the, in the Dark Ages. Then he goes back to Europe with an ambition of reconfederating the nations in the Roman Empire under an imperial France. Now, again, he was a product of the French Revolution that deposed the monarchy. Mm. But once he had this power, he goes into Notre Dame Cathedral and puts the emperor's crown on his own head. Mm. Believers in England, that time they were called evangelical Protestants or high church Anglicans. The I'm not high church, low church, low church Anglicans. They really were afraid that Napoleon was the Antichrist. There were believers who really believed it. He looked just like it, going to resurrect the Roman Empire. He's going to, he said he's going to bring the Jews back to Israel. He's going, he's resecured control of the Middle East from the Muslim world. They thought this. Now you have to remember in the 16th century, the Muslims reached Vienna. There was always a threat of the Muslims. Right. Um, now Napoleon goes back there. And the game changes. And of course, later it changed with the British as well. But um, that really happened. Charles Martel fought the Muslims and the Hazar Empire fought the Muslims and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But Napoleon comes in the, like, like Charlemagne and tries to make a, the Holy Roman Empire under the control of France and resurrect the Holy Roman Empire. 
this really scared people. I think that perhaps Macron has a Napoleonic complex. Um, France has not performed, e even in World War I, their performance left a lot to be desired. At least then they put up a fight, not a very successful one. It wasn't for the Americans entering the war on behalf of the British and French that I don't know if they could have beat the Kaiser. But um, France has always had this complex. D-Day, the Normandy invasions, the French were only minor partners in it. It was the British and the Americans. It, during the Cold War, de Gaulle pulled French troops out of NATO and hit on back of the Anglo-American defense barrier that was situated in Germany. Um, France has always had this inferiority complex. Not only that, but its best combat troops were not French. They were the French Foreign Legion. It's mm. similar to American Marines. They're just like war, war robots almost. But and, and there's not a lot of them. Um, they, they were the best French fighters. So France has had this complex. We have not really been a very strong power since Napoleon. We lost the Yen Ben Phu to, to, to the communists in Vietnam. We lost Algiers to the Muslims. Um, you know, they would like to revive their national sense of integrity um, as a military force to be reckoned with. Um, and, and they see NATO as a platform to do it. Um, that is part of what's happening. And Macron is trying to salvage his own legacy by that medium. Now, he has to move to the right politically, domestically, mm. because he's afraid of the electoral gains made by Le Pen's daughter, by Jean-Louis Le Pen's daughter, okay? Yes. He's afraid of the extreme right, so he has to move to the right to garner some of the right-wing voters <laughs> back for himself. So again, just like the United States it's and Britain it's a, and Israel, it's a matter of domestic politics. That is the other factor. Yeah, and it is getting really, really, really hot in Europe with uh, um, this idea of war coming. And, uh, you know, to speak on the economic collapse that's going on in the world, uh, all the countries, every Western Hemisphere, Eastern Hemisphere, it, it's all happening. Southern Hemisphere collapsing, even China getting hit pretty hard this week. Uh, Jacob, it's all setting up for a major war to set up some kind of cashless society, which has been the goal of a lot of these globalists, the digital currency, to stabilize the economy. As we've been saying, the Schwab Slavs are a dangerous brood of people. Yeah, they are. Uh, nobody is more vocal as to what their real agenda is as Hariri. He says that human rights, political freedom, these things are illusion. Um, he, he's a, he's a, he, he's a homosexual, of course, uh, and and he's he's not a computer scientist himself. He's a medieval historian, but he's an advisor to Schwab. This is their agenda. They know that unfunded liabilities. They know that government deficits and, and, and astronomical debt that, that, that cannot be repaid. Um, they need a solution. They need a reset. That is their thinking. That's that right. Is where they want to go. But let's look at something. As we've been saying over the last four to six weeks, everybody is in trouble. Last week passed, this past week, the total stock market losses that China has experienced over the last two and a half years, have now reached 9.8 billion, a trillion, 9.8 trillion US Yikes. dollars. 9.8 trillion! And there's more to come. The, the, the CCP is not telling the entire truth. Um, it's mainly foreign corporations who have investments in China who will give you the most accurate information about what's really happening with the Chinese economy, not the CCP. They, of course, whitewash everything to suit their own political agenda. That's, that, that's a serious mess in China. 9.8 billion, a uh, trillion? Really? 9 yeah. 8 trillion loss of equity in their capital markets and in, 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 in their equity markets? Free falling. This is unbelievable. Um, Germany is in trouble. Yet Germany overtook Japan as the world's third biggest economy when Germany is in persistent recession. Yet Japan overtook China's stock market. The Tokyo stock market overtook Shanghai 
and Hansing and Hansing overtook Hong Kong. Uh, not because not because Japan is doing well, Japan is doing badly, but but because China is doing worse. Worse, yeah. Uh, and, and and then Germany overtakes Japan, not because Germany is doing well, but because Japan is doing worse. How much longer can this go on? The United States has not gone into recession simply because they are pumping up the inflation on artificial life support with higher deficit spending and with inflation. That's what they're doing. That that's the only reason the United States is not in a recession like Germany is and like like Britain is. This is what we're dealing with. Nobody is doing well. Nobody. Yeah. Other places like China and Russia may be in a more precarious state, but nobody's doing well. And they have no, there's no clear way out of it. Jacob, may I ask you to just for one minute, please explain. Uh, I know you've explained it many times before, but could you please just reiterate why watching current news events is so important to being able to use prophecy as a gospel tool? Jesus spoke of a constellation of events that were to transpire of prophetic significance. This involves a panorama of things um, that are basically crystallized in the Olivet Discourse. Um, Luke 21, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and so forth. Jesus did not exhort or encourage. He commanded, he commanded, Therefore, be on the alert. Mm. You, you do not know which day your Lord is coming. Watch for these signs. When you see these things happening, it was not an option. It was a command, a That's command right. of Christ to be watchful. Hence, Satan raised up Rick Warren to say, no, ignore end time prophecy. It's a diversion. Satan is saying, keep away from it. And he has his spokesman, Rick Warren. Jesus says, watch out for these things when you see these things happening. And, and he speaks about the parable of the fig tree, and it, which has a much broader meaning than most people realize. J Jesus said, watch for these things. Daniel tells us none of the wicked are going to understand. None of the wicked are going to understand. But the faithful believers are meant to understand. Prophecy and its study is not an option. But he who has wisdom count the number of the beast. The Lord is our wisdom. Those who are the Lord's will be able to identify the Antichrist through the abomination of desolation and through understanding the number of the beast, which probably relates to gematria or isopsophy, as it's called in Greek. Probably. Well, but the devil raises up people, ignorant religious babblers, particularly among pre-tribulationists, who say, oh, don't worry about that stuff. We're not going to be here. You don't have to worry about the Antichrist. We'll be out of here before it happens. Um, don't listen to pre-tribulationist so-called Bible teachers. Don't listen to Rick Warren. Listen to Jesus Christ. He gave that revelation to John. We are to know these things. Seal these things up until the appointed time, Daniel is told, and they will be unsealed. It is not an option. It is not an admonishment. It is not an encouragement. It is a command of the Lord. Very good. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you, Jacob. Appreciate it. Uh, and by the way, um, we're going to be talking more about prophecy and the signs of prophecy. The good signs... That Jesus talked about and the made up signs that some yeah. people are talking about, including April 8th. So stay tuned for that. At the end of this episode, we'll be going to backstage and Jacob is going to talk about April 8th, what he thinks about it, what he thinks about the people that are promoting it and uh, ramping up, you know, much confusion and ramping up much controversy in the body of Christ. But we'll stay tuned for that. So you don't want to miss that. Jacob, 1804, Napoleon sends his general to squelch down the rebellion in Haiti. Haiti wins. Talk about Napoleon, talk about Haiti. And yep. now they're independent. 1804, National Day of Independence. Haiti's been 
independent for quite a long time. Unfortunately, things have not gone well, have not gone well for Haiti, and it's descending into chaos, violence, cannibalism. Uh, Jacob, speak a little bit about that because we brought it up last week, but now it's gotten worse. Now you got 200 gangs running the show, and the prime minister has stepped down. The first anti French, anti colonial rebellion in Haiti began in the 1790s. At the very, very beginning of the 19th century, Napoleon tries to put down the rebellion, but it began sometime earlier, okay? Um, Haiti was the first country in the Western Hemisphere to depose colonialism, okay, um, of the, outside of the United States. Okay, it was the first one to depose it. It is the oldest Black-ruled country in the world, with the exception of Ethiopia. Is the oldest black ruled country in the world with the exception of Ethiopia. What you find with the present race machine, the racocrats, are always talking about slavery and always talking about what happened 150 years ago and what happened 100 years ago. And black people shouldn't have to pay taxes, some of them are saying now, because of what was done to blacks 150 years ago. What absurdity. American blacks have the highest standard of living for black people anywhere in the world, including those with black governments. Post-colonial Africa is a disaster. I was against the apartheid. But as Desmond Tutu, whom I did not like theologically, admitted before he died, the Bishop Tutu in Cape Town, the ANC simply replaced one evil, apartheid, with another. That country is worse off, and Blacks are worse off now economically, and everything from unemployment to infant mortality to longevity. They are worse off in every possible way. But instead of looking at the realities, of post-colonial Africa, instead of looking at the realities of Haiti, countries that have been ruled by blacks for hundreds of years. It's easy to blame white people for something that happened 150 or 50 years ago. It's easier to blame white people for absentee fatherhood and a failed school system courtesy of the Democratic Party and the teachers union, which is simply a political campaign fund for the Democratic Party. Instead of putting the blame where it belongs, you make yourself a black stooge for white liberals. White people did not abduct blacks. They bought them from their own tribal chiefs or from chiefs who conquered other tribes. That is how slavery came. White people abducted nobody. Slavery already existed in Africa, and it still exists to this day in Chad, in Mauritania, in Niger. Rich Muslims own black slaves in Africa to this day. Black Africa has never abolished slavery. The Islamic world has never abolished slavery, but you've got to be up in arms about countries that did abolish it 150 years ago. and with the British longer than that. As Candace Owen correctly pointed out, white people did not invent black slavery, but white people ended it. That's right. But Absolutely. you don't tell the truth. You do not tell the truth. You have to engage in revisionism and manipulate ignorant, uneducated people with lies in order to control them politically and to divide society with a divide and conquer strategy. That is exactly what is happening. You want to see a black country with black rule? Look at Haiti. It's been ruled by blacks since the early, very early 1800s. They rebelled against France in the 1790s. Look, find me one country in post-colonial Africa. And I've been to many. I've been to Uganda. I've been to Kenya. I've been to Tanzania. I've been to Zambia. Find me one. Zimbabwe, certainly. Find me one where black people were not better off under European colonialism. And I don't like colonialism. I favor black independence. 
But if I was a black person, I might not because they were better off living under European governments than they are under their own governments. Why? One reason is tribalism. Another reason is pagan religion. Hmm. What is Haiti's problem? Voodoo. Yeah. A mixture of voodoo and Catholicism. And it's not just the black world. You've got Santeria, the same. Oh, the yeah. The Latin world. Yeah, okay. Santeria. It's the same thing. It's the same demonic power. Yeah. If you I may speak. add a little oh, bit ahead, to what Jake. Jacob's saying, uh, yeah. you know, another reason why they continue to beat the dead horse of 19th and 20th century slavery is the simple fact that today in the Western world, we still have slavery. It's called human trafficking. Yes. It's <laughs> illegal gangs in, in Mexico that will smuggle people over here and yep. keep them in perpetual slavery to them working on pot farms, working in brothels. Slavery never went away. And if we continue to look at the sins of the past, we will never defeat the slavery that's here today. That's Even correct. Here. That's right. And you look know, at the past so you can ignore the future. Yeah. They must divert attention away from the present and their inability to deliver a future by pointing to the past. That yeah. is the strategy of the ANC, and that is the strategy of the NAACP. Yeah, strategy of Satan for sure. It was actually Christians. It was actually Christians in politics and governments and society who were the major influence in why uh, slavery ended in America, in the UK. Abolitionism. Democracies. Absolutely. They were Christians who preached the gospel and people got saved. Now you have a, a you know a taskmaster and a slave, and they were both Christians. They were a brother, brother and brother. They couldn't be that to each other, and they made peace in Christ. And that's the only way. You're going to have peace. It's only in Christ. Jacob, this man called himself Barbecue. He's a gang leader. Uh, he's into cannibalism. Now, it's not the sustainable cannibalism for food. It's it's for shock and awe, but he kills people, boils them, and he eats their finger. This is rampant now in Haiti. Yes. And you got, you got missionaries who are begging to get out of there, but our State Department has turned a deaf ear to them yep. Biden that. and Lincoln don't care about the American missionaries who are in Haiti basically to take care of impoverished orphans most of the American missionaries in Haiti take care of impoverished impoverished orphans and sick orphans um Blinken State Department Biden administration is not lifting a finger to help them that is true as far as the cannibalism again this is something that is unbelievable to us, perhaps, but you have to understand the strong influences of voodooism in Haiti, going back to Papa Doc. Mm. And you've got blood consumption and other kinds of rituals like this that come into play in voodoo. So it is not completely alien to their mentality, but he does it to dismember people's digits and chew on them and things like this to, to scare and intimidate any potential political rivals. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's, it's unbelievable. And you, you remember you talked about some of the things that happened in 70 AD in the Babylonian, cap, uh, right yes. before the Babylonian captivity. Yes. Uh, and, and it's going to happen again. And when a, a society descends like that into yes. such chaos and, and, and lack of food and, and violence, and you got this guy named yes. Barbie going around targeting missionaries, targeting yes. other people uh, that are there to help. Yes. Uh, missionaries are begging to get out. Uh, I, I think there was Corey Mills, a, re, uh, a representative from uh, yes. Florida, got 10 missionaries out. Yes, only 10. Yeah, half faith uh, orphanage. Uh, but there's other ones there. And the State Department doesn't want to do anything about it, just like what happened in Afghanistan. And so the, these, uh, the, this is a major play what's going on there. And, and all the, all the uh, by the way, all the Christian missionaries and all the workers, they all report that one of the things that happened in Haiti that was devastating to them was the Clinton Foundation yes. being... And uh, the smuggling that happened and children were being, uh, you know, they disappeared. All of a sudden they disappeared yes. as soon as the Clintons got there. So there's much to be said about that. Again, same pattern, another Democrat. Again, I've seen the damage that the Clintons did in Uganda. Oh, and it, it is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Jacob, is he going to desert uh, Christians now in Haiti, Joe Biden? Does it seem like he's deserting them again? I, don't, I have no doubt he would. Man, unreal.
but no one's going to care about it, I guess, because the Christians taking care of, of the poor. Uh, but even DeSantis wants to send out border agents to be placed in Florida because 100,000 of them unvetted yes. coming through the border. And these are the same gangs through the yes. border, the same gangs. And uh, my fear is that you're going to have this kind of violence in this country, along with the Venezuelan gangs that Maduro's uh, uh, letting go of prison and going yes. right into the border. No border check. On Notice Vatican. that these Haitian refugees don't want to go to Cuba and enjoy the yeah. blessings of Marxism. Yeah, I don't know. Castro doesn't want him there. <laughs> yeah. Castro doesn't want him oh, there. Yeah. yeah, but Maduro wants to let them out because he wants to make sure. this deal with Iran, this oil yep. uh, alliance, more of an oil alliance, because uh, the U.S. is ready to hit him with... Uh, sanctions again now that they've used up some of the oil they want to hit them in sanctions again so they're lining up with iran even further uh with the prices surging because of the supply risk uh this is gonna hit us right in the face with all these economic problems but biden doesn't care he is he just wants to make this deal with yeah, iran don't forget the other the other factor is guiana oh yeah in in in, in south america right by yeah. brazil in Venezuela, yes. yeah, that that is another problem. Which we already have troops there. We're sending troops to Haiti. Yes, and the Biden administration is trying to make relief sanctions to Iran. That's his yeah. major concern. That's relief correct. Sanctions to Iran. Take a point. Iran has a thirty-six percent inflation rate. The yeah. economy is getting in trouble again, despite all the money that Obama uh, and and Biden gave to them. Billions. Yeah, they're unfrozen assets, and the other money through Korea. And and what what Obama gave to them on that airplane that that when they found <laughs> out they got caught, you're oh, talking gosh. something like a total of six hundred billion dollars to oh, fund gosh. Islamic terror. As Man. we've been saying, Iran is the number one sponsor of radical terror in the world, Islamic terror, and yeah. the Biden or Joe Obama administration is the number one sponsor of Iran. But you're no talking about, about something that. That anybody looking at it rationally and honestly, I don't see how you wouldn't conclude that it is a betrayal. Make no mistake about it. As soon as they unfroze the assets, less than a month, you had October 7th. And That's then right. the, the tragedy That's that right. happened with the attack. So it, oh, this Biden, is again. Biden paid for it. Yeah, he did. Now, with that money, the Houthis now have hypersonic missiles from yeah. Iran via Russia. Yeah. So, it, it, you're fighting one and you're supplying the other. It, it's Trying just, to stop what the Houthis are doing. Well, you paid for it. Yeah, they did. You gave, they you did. gave Iran the money to do it. Oh, man. It's it's so bad. Now they can hit uh, targets very far away. Any target that can go down to the Cape of Good Hope, they're going to hit them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're threatening to shoot at ships that are traveling down the east coast of Africa to go around the Cape of Good Hope and up man. the west coast of Africa to Europe. This hypersonic missiles have Mach 8 speed, eight, to eight times the speed of sound. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be able to get away from them. No. Look, the only thing you can do is hit Iran or make it clear to Iran, if this doesn't stop, we're coming after you. You have to stand up to Iran the way that Trump did. Yeah. But unfortunately, Barack Obama and Joe Biden, Iran had two pockets. Obama was in one and Biden was in the other. They betrayed the country. You couldn't say it any other way. You couldn't say it any other way, but why is this happening with Hamas? Biden yes. paid for it. Obama paid for it. Why is this happening with Hezbollah? Who paid for it? The American government. Mm. Yeah, so even the UK wants to use uh, um, you know direct yes. energy weapons. Yes, uh, but they're not being allowed to do. It. They can shoot a drone, one of those uh, Houthi drones, for about thirteen dollars. They can shoot it down for about thirteen dollars, but they're not being allowed to do it. With those weapons are still being perfected, they can say that, and that may be a legitimate claim. I don't know how advanced that technology is yet, but I do know it exists. Yeah, these secret talks with Iran, it, it troubles me, Jacob. This is this happened in January. Nobody knew about it until now, and nothing's being done about it. Nothing. No, you have betrayal. People like Biden, Harris, people like Austin, people, you know... Certainly, Jake Sullivan. I, I find it almost impossible to find any other definition for what they're doing other than betrayal. Yeah, it, it's happening left and right. Let's talk about another uh, another thing that's interesting in social media, the ban of TikTok. This bill that is going to go to the Senate now, 
It's uh, it's a bill banning TikTok, the, the the Chinese app, the CCP app, owned by uh, ByteDance, who reports to the CCP. Uh, there are some Republicans and, and Democrats who are saying, absolutely not. We need to take this app down. Jacob, is it opening up, opening up some doors to what Congress can do, or what do you think this is happening? I think there are two aspects of it. The first aspect is well that I pointed out was it is part and parcel of an overall strategy to contain China's advancement into ultra high tech cyber technology. Um, restrictions on giving microchips and, adv and physically advanced innovative chips, chip technology that comes from Taiwan, that comes from South Korea, that comes from Holland, and that comes from Silicon Valley. It is part and partial of that restriction wanting to stop China from getting that technology and passing it on to Russia because the Russian embargoes prevent them from getting that kind of chip technology. This So it relates to the Ukraine war as well. Second is, as you pointed out, Marco, that they make an example. Look, if we can go after TikTok, who can't we go after? Exactly. <laughs> that's my that's my concern. And, it, and it's a uh, both parties agreed to this. Yeah. To give power to con the, the thing that bugs me about it the most is Congress knows what the CCP does with buying land, buying land next to uh, a military basis. Uh, everything, just about everything in America is made in China. They, they they have the pharmaceuticals. They have the virus thing that they that that, that they that they release to the gift to the world. Congress, nothing. This app, oh, we have to go after it. It's the from both parties, the hypocrisy yes. of not dealing with the CCP. All of a sudden, it's an issue. All of a sudden, well, again, I, I've been saying for some time, why does the Biden administration not crack down on China buying this land? Absolutely. Absolutely. But they've threatened to litigate against states who put those restrictions. Mm. Sue the states. Secondly, of course, those Chinese balloons. Why didn't Biden shoot them down, shoot them down. <laughs> over, over the basis? Um, is Biden... And his son, are they Chinese assets? Or are they being blackmailed somehow by China? Is Biden a Chinese asset? We cannot say he is not. We cannot say he's not. Um, it, it, that is for sure. But another issue is there are Chinese manufactured drones flying over the United States from Mexico every mm. day of the week. Mm. They're being used by the cartels yeah. uh, to assist in their smuggling. But you've got like Fort Huachuca in southern Arizona, um, down by Bisbee. That's right on the border. And that is a major, major military intelligence base. Um, these drones are flying across the border every day, and they're Chinese manufactured. You have embedded technology in TikTok and throughout TikTok. You've got stupid people saying, don't close down TikTok. China is building up a database on them personally. Oh, um, it's, a, it's an invasive app. And these stupid people, too stupid to know it. What they would like to do and what should be done quickly is force China to sell it. Just force China to sell it to Rumble. Rumble, yeah. going to buy it. Rumble wants to buy it. That, that would be interesting, Jay. You had Rumble. You have access to TikTok right away. Right. That would be that would be great. Um, also, I would like to mention that China, through shell companies, own a lot of the uh, farms in the Midwest, in the, in the Bible Belt, actually that grow a lot of the pot for the United States. So yes. it's between that, they also uh, send immigrate immigrants to work those farms for almost nothing, and they keep them there as slaves. So it, it all ties together. Yes. China wants to dumb America down. They use TikTok to do it. They use mm -hmm. drugs to do that. They use fentanyl to do that. They yeah. have been for years playing an opium war against the United States. That's they right. are playing the yeah. exact same thing that the, the British, British did to them. That is playing correct. it on the West. They're and doing with fentanyl. They're doing with fentanyl and with pot, but particularly yes. fentanyl. You know, I it's don't successful. know. I don't know who owns the Joe Obama machine more, the Biden Obama machine more, China or Iran. I know. You can't really tell sometimes. Bush, Bush, I know. The Saudi Arabians had the Bush dynasty in their back pocket. There was no question. Who who controlled Bush and Cheney? The, the Saudis had 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 the Bush administration in their back pocket, and, and his vassals like Cheney. There's no question. But 
now Biden, he's beholden to so many. Who owns them? I don't even think they know. Whoever owns them, it's not the American people. Yeah, the devil. Absolutely the devil. Um, uh, Jacob, I, I, we did we hit the hour mark yet, Davey? I think we did. I uh, just want to remind everyone, thank you for watching live. You We hit the hour mark, and usually we remind people about, well, we like to thank you for watching live and watch later, but also remind you you're watching Catching Up on different platforms. We will be going over to backstage, and we got a, a very powerful backstage. It is the April 8th eclipse, the solar eclipse that a lot of prophecy teachers and updates have been coming around and saying something's going to happen that day. Well, uh, Jacob's going to tell us about it, and uh, uh, and he is going to mention names, and he's going to hold no uh, <laughs> hold no prisoners. Uh, we're going to talk about it and 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 give a good response to much of the confusion that's going on there. So that is on backstage. So don't miss out on that. As soon as we're done with this episode on catching up, we'll jump over to the backstage uh, aspect of the show, and uh, you'll be able to hear Jacob answer questions and. We'll be talking about April 8th. Jacob, Hezbollah has fired more than 100 rockets this week into Israel. Uh, the retaliation has been there, but Israel is very quiet about it because they still got to deal with the Gaza situation. So th this happened on Monday down by the, uh, uh, the the Israeli response was to the Becca Valley. And then yes. some of the Israeli cities were hit. 80,000 Israelis have been displaced already. Uh, yes. The news doesn't say that. The news is not talking about it. Since the attack of Hezbollah into northern Israel. Jacob, talk a little bit about that and the response that the U.S. is giving Netanyahu because they're frowning upon Rafa, They're frowning upon Lebanon and the attack from Hezbollah that Israel cannot respond, cannot defend itself. Uh, the red lines pretty much have been set by Biden and Bibi and it's coming to a halt there. So go ahead and take it away. We have to remember that the Obama administration, that Biden and the Obama's people who control him, they do not represent the interests of the United States or of America's friends or allies, such as Israel. They are in bed with the Iranians. They are selling the country down the river to Islamic terror. They are funding it by the unfreezing of Iranian assets. We already have established that. That is exactly their policy. They are the enemies of America. They are the enemies of Israel, the Democratic Party. The one thing curtailing them is the fact that it's an election year and there are still enough stupid left-wing American Jews who vote Democrat, and they don't want to lose that. But let's look at what's happening. Why are they wanting to build that dock to bring supplies into Gaza and That's air right. drop supplies into Gaza? When it was 400,000 killed in Yemen, they didn't care about the Arab Muslims. When it was 450,000 killed in Syria, they didn't care about it. It's only when Israel defends itself from Iranian-sponsored terror, that it becomes an issue. You have the Islamic communities of Chicago and Michigan protesting the Democratic Party. Yep. Biden has to find a way to placate those people. He's building this dock, and he's sending the 17th um, Transport Battalion of the U.S. Army to do it. Putting American troops on the ground to supply Hamas, because those supplies are not going to the people, they're going to Hamas. Very little of those supplies go to the people. Most of the aid provided by the UN and by the USA winds up in the hands of Hamas, and then Hamas either sells it or uses it for its own purpose. This is the first joke, lie, and Obama knows it, um, Austin knows it, um, Blinken knows it. Jake Sullivan knows it. Camila Harris knows it. This is what's happening. These protests in Chicago and in Michigan. Now Biden has put further sanctions against West Bank Jews, Jews living in the West Bank, making this the big issue. There was no issue when you had the genocide in Syria. Barack Obama, being the spineless coward he is and the liar he is, said he drew a red line don't use chemical weapons against your own people <laughs> in Syria. When they did, Obama did nothing because nothing. he's a limp-wristed coward. And that's all he's ever been, is a limp-wristed coward. Essentially, he won't do it. He, he did nothing. Um, it's all politically motivated. If this was not an election year, the daggers would really come out for Israel. That's right. But 
but there are the menlauses. A menlaus is to the Jewish world what Benedict Arnold is to the United States or Judas is to the Christian world. The traitor, the Jewish traitor from the story of Hanukkah and the Maccabees. One menlaus is Chuck Schumer, senator from New York. He is now calling for the deposition, deposing of Benjamin Netanyahu in national elections in Israel. He's denouncing conservative Israelis and conservative American Jews as bigots. 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 People who stand against radical Islamic terror are bigots. Lying about them. Schumer is lying, saying that they are the ones who oppose the Palestinian state. The Palestinians could have had a state from Ehud Barak, and they turned it down. They could have had a, a, a Palestinian state in Gaza, and they turned it down in 2005, 2006. Now they're saying, no, they only want one nation from the river yeah. to the sea, from the Jordan to the Mediterranean. Yet Schumer, being a liar he is, lying against other Jews, lying, selling his own people down the river, as well as betraying America, is saying that these people are bigots. You defend yourself from Islamic terror, you're a bigot, says Schumer. This is what you're dealing with. He is a menlaus. He is a traitor. The Maccabees killed people like him. The Maccabees killed people like him. Well, his crimes are just as just as bad. I pray the God of Israel raises his hand against Schumer, against Washerman Schultz, against Blumenthal, against Adam Schiff, against Jerry Nadler, and against these other menlauses. All of them. And not least of all, Spitzer, the governor of Illinois. Illinois, yeah. Although Illinois will remain Democrat, the Democrats are losing electoral support in Illinois. They're losing power. Not as many people are going to vote for Biden as voted for him the last time or voted for Obama. They're even beginning to lose control in um, blue states, certain blue states, Washington being one, Illinois being another, because Biden or Joe Obama is such a bad president. But let's go further with this. What else are they doing? Their mainstream media is publishing the fake Hamas fatality and casualty statistics from Gaza. The State Department knows they're being exaggerated and manipulated. They know that Hamas is using its own people as human shields and attacks Israel, uses its own people as human shields. And then when the Israelis fight back in self-defense and there's collateral damage killing their own civilians who they're using as shields, they exaggerate the numbers of them and are supported, of course, by the international left wing and social media. And the State Department knows that this is what's happening. They know very well. It's all a big lie. So what does Biden want to do? Instead of saying, we will allow supplies, food, water, medication, oil into Gaza, as soon as you release the prisoners, no, we're going to airdrop that stuff so Hamas can confiscate it. Hamas said there will be more October 7th. They're going to continue the jihad, not just against Israel and the Zionists, but against all Jews. Then they're going to go after the Christians. They've actually stated that in Qatar. Their senior leadership has stated it, and Biden wants to make sure they have the wherewithal and means to do it. He wants to make sure they survive. Netanyahu does not. Netanyahu wants to go into Rafa and put an end to them, and then turn his attention towards Hezbollah in the north. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said, for sure. This is what is really happening. The wickedness and the evil of Biden and Barack Obama their betrayal of America, their betrayal of Israel, but even the worst betrayal of America and Israel by Schumer and left-wing American Jews who are in the same party with the squad is unbelievable. Jacob, do you think there'll be any any repercussions for Netanyahu if he does go through with Rafa? Because it looks like Biden is it's, it's saying, don't go in there. We're going to make sure that you don't use even our own weapons. 
you can use you as American uh, American weapons in in Rafa. Uh, do you think that? I mean, I know they're trying to get him, get him out. I know Schumer said that there needs to be another election that needs to get him out. But do you do you think that there will be some kind of retaliation? Maybe they'll vote for a ceasefire instead of uh, abstaining from it. The pressure coming on Israel is unbelievable. Now, bear in mind, Netanyahu was in a very precarious position politically because the attack took them by surprise. And as Rosh Hashanah, as prime minister, he must bear primary responsibility with his own government. So he's in a politically vulnerable situation for legitimate reasons in his own country. But of course, the Biden, the uh, Biden administration is playing this card. They can say things like, Netanyahu failed to provide protective leadership and this surprise attack came because Netanyahu was not watching Hamas. He was not watching Gaza. They'll play any card they can get. What we can be sure of is the following. If it was not an election year, the Biden administration would be raising an even stronger hand against Israel. Mm. This is for sure. The yeah, fact so that it's an election year is somewhat restraining the capacity of Biden to sell Israel down the river even further in favor of Iran. I know there's a lot of, um, there's been tension in Israel, especially directed toward Netanyahu. Jacob, do you think there'll be another election? It could happen, but because of the war, is Israel is in survival mode. Yeah. And I think there'll be a day of reckoning politically after the war, but in the meantime, as long as the war is going on, the nation could not handle an election campaign right now. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, you've got Naftali Bennett and these other people. Let's not forget, in order to try to retain power, the Israeli right, the Likud party and so forth, has to seem tough. That's the only way they can have a credible platform against the Labour Party. Yep. What happened... What happened when Golda Meir fell from power after the Yom Kippur War in 1973 that brought um, Menachem Begin and the Likud to power in coalition with the National Religious Party? She was held to account for what happened on Yom Kippur. Moshe Dayan saved his own neck by changing parties, but they got rid of Golda and she paid the price for it. Mr. Netanyahu is very well aware of the fact that his government is culpable for that attack coming as it did by a complete surprise. Um, he's quite culpable and he's quite vulnerable politically. So there is a vested interest in perpetuating a war by the Israeli right. I'm not saying that they're doing that aggressively or provoking it, but I am saying it works to their political advantage. Yeah. It's it's just amazing to think of the scriptures. The scripture talks about Israel, talks about Jerusalem being a a, a burdensome stone and a heavy stone upon those, and those who try to heave it away will be severely hurt. It, yes. it's, it's, it's what Biden's dealing with. It's at the center of it all. It's the controversy of Israel and what and the Jews are in the middle of it. And he he he's against them. And he wants to get rid of them, but he can't because Look, God no is going to hold it over it's his no head. No different than the South African government saying to South African Jews who have Israeli dual citizenship that if you fight in the Israeli army, we're going to arrest you if you come back to South Africa. But they don't say that about Muslims, about South yeah. African Muslims who go fight with Islamic terror. It's only against the Jews. Well, yeah. Biden's the same. It's just that he cannot politically get away with it to the yeah. same degree as the ANC. But he's no different than they are. You know, I've seen American presidents go down the tube because of what they failed to do or did to do to Israel and the Jewish people. Uh, and, and it holds true. God holds it over the nations, how they treat his people. And it's a burdensome stone. And I've seen many presidents go down this road. It seems like Biden does not want to deal with Israel. He has to. He has to placate to the uh, to the Muslim world. He has to placate to the Muslim vote in America, which is increasingly powerful and more vocal. So... Yes. I don't think it comes out of this good. I think God's hand is going to be against Biden and against what he's, especially what he does. I mean, can you, the Christians in Haiti, I mean, turning his blind eye to it and just pretending it's not there. 
it's just another indication of how evil our political system has become. Both parties. I don't necessarily want parties. one seems to be one more both than the parties. Other. Yeah, absolutely. You know, both parties. But Israel has not had a bigger enemy in the White House than Barack Obama and Joe Biden. And Christianity has not had a bigger enemy in the White House yeah. than Barack Obama and Joe Biden. At a time like this, evil has really These surpassed. These are evil men. We must pray that God raises his hand against them. This very week on a campaign on the campaign trail, Camila Harris was giving a political campaign speech in an abortion clinic. Yeah, in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, in an so, abortion clinic. Yeah. Um, these are evil people. We must pray that not only that they're defeated, and I'm not taking sides with the Republicans, I'm just saying stop these evil leaders, but that God raises his hand against them. God must raise his hand against them. Or our right. nation is coming under judgment in the United States. It's crazy that that's exactly the election time and exactly what we need to do is pray for our nation. As Paul the Apostle prayed for the, uh, or asked for prayer to the Thessalonians in the last chapter of his second letter, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may rapidly yeah. be honored and just as it was with you and pray that we may deliver it from wicked people and from the devil, from evil, for not every one of them, not everyone has faith. So be delivered from evil and evil yes. people. That everyone not because not everyone yes. has it, but the Lord is faithful, he said, and he will strengthen you and protect you from yes. the evil one. That is exactly what we need to pray for. And that God will deliver us from evil men, evil people that are causing such tremendous, tremendous evil in the world, being unleashed because of the wickedness. And of course, Satan is using them. Uh, Jacob, we're gonna go over to backstage and I want to let everybody know that switch over because we're gonna be talking about April 8th and what that means because. As we're talking about the judgment of God and judgment over nations, uh, well, some people are saying there is a specific date that's coming. It looks like America's on the crosshair with the Lord. So uh, is it April 8th? Is it another date? Are we under judgment already? And we're just, and, and there's just more, um, I guess people are putting a date to it rather than what the scriptures has to say. All that, we'll be talking about it with Jacob Prash on backstage so please one more very brief point one. Michael. sorry one more very brief point please pray against this online harms act in canada being pushed by trudeau's government um it will make it a criminal offense to say things contrary to the policies of, of the trudeau government essentially we already saw what he was capable of freezing the bank accounts of people for giving cookies to truck drivers in the COVID protests. He's an enemy of democracy. He's an enemy of freedom. I believe the man is an enemy of Canada. He's a wicked, wicked man. He's similar to Andrews in in, in Victoria, Australia. He's similar to uh, Adern in New Zealand. Um, he's a dangerous man. Please pray against this law. It will be the... Be it, it, it's a nail in the coffin of Canadian democracy. The Online Arms uh, Harms Act. Please pray that this law does not go through and that God removes Trudeau. Well, it will be his trifecta. He's passed three different bills and trying yep. to destroy uh, any sort of free speech, any Christian speech, apprehension of pastors. So much to talk about. We should talk about Canada soon one of these days and uh, lay out some of the stuff that uh, yes. Jake was brought out, plus other things. So God bless you guys. We'll see you on backstage in just a few minutes. Hello, and thank you for watching Moriel TV. There are so many things that are happening at Moriel Ministries worldwide, from the Philippines to Japan, to India to Africa, and back to Europe and the United States. So many of our brothers and sisters are spreading the good news of Jesus Christ to this lost world. We are so thankful for your prayers. God has been faithful and has blessed us in so many ways. If you'd like to partner with our efforts abroad and at home, please take a moment to click the link in the description and help us as the Lord leads you. Thank you very much and God bless.